In this video, we're going to take a look at using Captive Portal for authentication on the Sophos XG firewall. So why would you want to use Captive Portal? You can have firewall access rules that require authentication to access the internet or various network resources. If a user is trying to access the internet or network resource and their authentication through SSO, NTLM, RADIUS, or guest service methods have failed, Captive Portal allows the user to authenticate to the firewall and gain access to the internet or network resources. Captive Portal provides a last resort authentication method to the firewall. Even though Captive Portal can be used for both internet access and network access, when you're using it specifically for internet access, an unknown user trying to access the internet should be redirected to the Captive Portal. However, on most networks, DNS settings are inherited on the WAN port from your internet service provider. When you're blocking WAN access for unknown users, they cannot reach the DNS servers that are out on the WAN. Therefore, a user trying to access the internet where authentication is required, they will not be redirected to the captive portal. You need to create a separate firewall access rule that does not require authentication so those users can hit the DNS servers. The WAN DNS access rule that needs to be added can be created by clicking on the Add Firewall rule in the upper right corner of the Firewall User Administration interface under the Protect Firewall section. The settings for the rule are listed below. For rule name and description, you can put whatever you want. Just make sure that for the match known users that the checkbox is unchecked. We'll talk later in the video why that's important when we create a firewall rule using the captive portal. Now let's take a look at how to configure the captive portal enable the captive portal to be used for a zone, and create a firewall access rule to access the internet that requires all users accessing the internet to be known to the firewall. First, I'm going to configure the captive portal. On the left-hand navigation bar, click on authentication in the configure section. Next, click on the captive portal tab across the top. I'm going to click on the preview button at the bottom of the screen so we can compare the captive portal screen that the user sees to the options we have here in the firewall to configure. The Sophos logo you see at the top of the captive portal screen can be changed to your own logo by clicking on the custom option next to logo. In the logo URL field, you would enter the URL address a user would be directed to if they were to click on your logo. You can see here that network authentication is the page title and you can add a message to the top or bottom of the captive portal screen in the login header and footer section. The remaining options that can be changed can be seen on the captive portal page as well. You also have the option to change colors or create your own completely customized captive portal page in the custom HTML template section. Once you have all your settings defined the way you want them, click on the apply button at the bottom of the screen to save your changes and then OK to confirm. Next, I'm going to make sure that the Captive Portal feature is enabled on the LAN zone. Click on Administration in the System section of the navigation bar. Now click on the Device Access tab option across the top. Make sure the checkbox for Captive Portal is checked on the LAN zone row. If not, check it and then click Apply and then OK to confirm. Now I'm going to create a firewall access rule for users on the LAN zone to access the internet through the WAN zone. As part of this access rule, I'm going to require the users be known to the firewall. To create the rule, I'm going to click on Firewall in the Protection section of the navigation bar. Next, I'm going to click on the Add Firewall Rule button and select the User Network Rule option. I'm going to name this rule Internet Access for Known Users. For Rule Position, I'm going to select Top. For Source, click on Add New Item and select LAN, then Apply. For Destination Zone, click on Add New Item and select WAN, then Apply. In the Identity section, we're going to make sure that the Match Known Users is checked. Checking Match Known Users is what will trigger this access rule to only allow those users that are selected in the Users or Groups section to use this rule. This feature is what gives you very granular control on what resources network users have access to. As I click on Add New Item in the User or Groups box, by default, any is selected. Uncheck the any checkbox and now I can select specific groups or individuals that I may have defined. For this video, I'm going to keep any selected so this rule will apply to all users. Next, I'm going to check the checkbox for show captive portal to unknown users. If any user from the LAN zone is trying to access the internet through the WAN zone and the firewall does not know who they are, this will cause the firewall to present the user the captive portal screen to authenticate. 
For malware scanning, I'm going to select to scan HTTP and FTP. In the advanced section for intrusion prevention, I'm going to select a general policy and allow all for both web policy and application control. Check the checkbox for log firewall traffic so triggers to this access rule are sent to the logs. Click on save to save this access rule. Earlier in the video, I mentioned that most networks are set up to use DNS servers located out on the internet for website name resolution. In this example, I do not have any internal DNS servers and I inherit my DNS server settings from my internet service provider on my WAM port. By creating the access rule we just created, we would block users access to DNS servers and therefore they would not be redirected to the captive portal screen. I'm now going to create that WAN DNS access rule I mentioned earlier in the video. Click on add firewall rule and select user network rule. I'm going to name this rule allow WAN DNS access. We want to make sure that it's an accept action and for source zones we're going to add LAN. For destination zones, we're going to add WAN. For services, I want to specify DNS. For match known users, we want to make sure this checkbox is unchecked. We want this rule to apply to any user, whether they're known or not. Click Save at the bottom of the screen. For now, I'm going to turn off the WAN DNS access rule so you can see what the user will see when they trigger our internet access rule requiring to be a known user. Now let's take a look at the user experience. Remember that I have the access rule for WAN DNS turned off. I am going to attempt to go to Google's homepage. When I type in www.google.com and I press enter, I get the server not found pages you see below. I do not get Google's homepage, nor do I get the captive portal screen. I'm going to go back into the firewall and turn on the WAN DNS access rule that I created. Remember, this access rule allows any user on the LAN zone to go out the WAN zone only for the specific service of DNS. Now I'm going to go back to my browser to try access to Google's homepage again. When I type in www.google.com and hit enter this time, I am now presented with a page that tells me my connection is not secure. You could go through and click on advanced and add an exception to get to the captive portal screen as you see here, but if you trained your users, they should not proceed with a warning like this. If I now put in a valid username and password and log in, the firewall now knows who I am and I'm able to continue to Google's homepage. The user will be able to continue to surf the web as long as they keep the captive portal screen open. For web policies for unauthenticated users, you have the option to change if the captive portal is immediately displayed to your user, or what I like to do instead is have a message displayed first, warning them about the coming not secure page connection they're about to get with the captive portal. I'm now going to click on authentication in the configure section of the navigation bar, and then on the services tab across the top. Once on the services screen, scroll all the way to the bottom to the Web Policy Actions for Unauthenticated Users section. By default, the firewall is set to show the captive portal page. If you look at the options listed here, this is why I was sent to Google's homepage after I authenticated on the captive portal. Next to the URL redirect, user requested URL is selected. If you wanted to have a user go to say your home page, you would select custom URL and put the URL for your own page here. Instead of the captive portal page, I like to click on display a custom message for that warning message. Notice how your options changed. If you want to have your own logos appear on this message screen, use these fields here. The default message needs some work. As it stands, it will not display the captive portal for a user. It only displays the message information you see. The message I like to have displayed warns them about the not secure connection message coming and what to do. I'm including a slide of the example HTML code and verbiage I used. You can see here on the slide an example of what will be displayed with this HTML code and verbiage. With this message, your user should now feel comfortable continuing with the not secure connection to the captive portal. Now let's see what this looks like in action. I'm going to attempt to go to Google's homepage again. As I type in www.google.com and press enter, now instead of seeing the not secure connection page, I see our display message instead. Now I click on the captive portal link. I see the not secure connection warning. Click through it to the captive portal, log in, and now I have internet access. Thank you for watching this video and I hope that you found it helpful.